Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine that last night Ukraine targeted the military Russian airfield in Jankoy, Crimea. The eyewitnesses even filmed some of the video. The full version of it I posted on my Telegram channel and for sure something was burning on the ground out there. Now we already know what was burning, let me show you some of the picture. Reportedly those were the Russian air defense systems as 400s located in that particular airfield. At least we have this image and many comments about it shared in internet. Plus in media sources and for sure those are the S-400 or S-300 air defense systems. Let's see how many of those were targeted. So this one system, this is the other one on the background, one more, one more and probably on the front as well, could be four up to five. Well, you may say that this part is mostly intact, but the vehicle is for sure destroyed and also the missiles inside are damaged. Those are the very expensive Russian air defense systems. The airfield was targeted in many of the places and many of the kabooms were reported by locals. We have even this photo from the apron showing the part of missile, probably. And it is a great achievement for the Ukrainian army, so what exactly was used to target this facility? Many reported about the Attackams missiles. Ukraine had received the Attackams missiles the last year, but it has the short-range modification with the cluster munition only. So Ukraine is unable to use Attackams far behind the front lines, but for Jankoy it's still reachable. We may select HIMARS on the military map and also go to Attackams munition. This one M39 with a range up to 165 kilometers and let's put it somewhere over here. So Jankoy, I would say, is kind of reachable. Maybe from this area, yeah, this one is reachable 100%. But if we have the normal Attackams modification with the range up to 300 kilometers, you may see how good it is for Ukraine in this case. We also have some of the good news about the Attackams missiles. I'm gonna tell you about those later in this video. Zelensky confirmed that the Ukraine targeted Jankoy military airfield, but he didn't say what tool Ukraine used for that, but from my information, yes, it was Attackams. According to official information, the attack was successful and judging on the photo, which was published, yes, indeed, it was successful. The Russian military bloggers confirmed the strike but the Russian official propaganda says nothing about the case. As it is reported from the Russian telegram groups, Russia had losses out there. Around 30 staff members of the airfield were wounded or lost their lives. Alright, about our pro-Ukrainian YouTubers, for example, the channel reporting from Ukraine. I think that we should stay in a solid community and I'm calling you, my friends, to support this channel by trying to solve the issue of the huge bot attack. So how can we do it? We may contact the YouTube support right on Twitter or some people call it X platform. So we may just go to reporting from Ukraine YouTube channel and watch the last video on the channel. Here he explains how to do it in a better way. Well, the idea is to contact the YouTube support on Twitter. It is basically the only way to solve at least something. The actual YouTube support on YouTube doesn't work. You speak with some sort of the robot, they do not solve any issues. Saying that, I also encourage you to support our job on Patreon. Uh, all of the pro-Ukrainian channels are doing fantastic job in this hard time. But YouTube turned its back towards us. My videos were restricted, you know. This channel or group of the channels is also suffering. Many of the channels were blocked or demonetized. So guys, we rely on your support on Patreon. If you want to join the Patreon of reporting from Ukraine, you may check out their channel. If you want to join my Patreon, you may check out the links in the video description just below. Thank you so much for your kind support. And while I'm recording this video, there were kabooms reported in the Russian city of Voronezh. The local governor reported that some of the industrial building was damaged. They shut down the drone, but drone debris went to this building straight away. No casualties reported. This morning something happened in Tatarstan too. Some of the sirens and the drones were flying in the skies. 
The main target was the maintenance facility for the Russian strategic bombers 222M3 and 2160M. As it was reported by the Russian side, drones indeed were aiming towards the place but were shut down on their way. From Ukraine we are still in lack of the official information about this particular strike. No photos, no any evidence, it's hard to say of what is happening out there. But let me tell you the news that I found yesterday also from Tatarstan, Russia. In Tatarstan, 14 years old will be recruited to work at a military factories. The parliament of Tatarstan has prepared a new regional program to promote young employment in the military facilities. Remember then Ukraine targeted the Shahid drone factory. It was also a military facility and there were youngsters who work on that Russian military factory. Some of them were just 16 years old, teens. And now they want to hire 14 years old to work for their military Later on they will accuse Ukraine for targeting their kids. I wonder where the Russian men went if they have to hire child labor force. An alarming headline from the news week, they say that Ukraine may have just crossed Putin's nuclear red line. So what happened? Ukrainian drones reportedly targeted 519 separate radio engineering center of military unit, this number, in the city of Kavinkova on Wednesday morning, April 11th. Sorry about this advertisement, can't do anything with it. So the place is 360 miles from Ukrainian border. So what's important about this target? Because it's the home for 29B6 container over horizon radar, which forms a part of Russia's reconnaissance and early warning network for airspace attacks, including those by ballistic missiles. So if the Russian counterpart launches ballistic missiles, for example, to target the Russian Federation, they might see it with the help of this radar. However, we don't have the confirmation that Ukraine definitely damaged or targeted this very important system for the Russian Federation. Russian authorities reported shutting down two of the UAVs, which were flying towards that place. But the outcome of the strike is still being assessed, so here we have not reliable information and basically Newsweek itself is not a very reliable source. Unreliable. But nevertheless, Ukraine has the ability to target this container system because it's not really far from the Ukrainian border for Ukrainian long-range drones. All right, we have probably good news from the United States of America, from Congress and from Mike Johnson. Finally, he presented the military support not just for Ukraine but for other United States allies like Israel and Taiwan. So you may ask me what is good about those projects. I believe right now that there are high chances for those to pass through Senate and Congress. President Biden also supported this deal. Now I think that the only way for those kind of the bills not to pass through Congress or Senate is just voting for Mike Johnson dismissment, which happened to the previous speaker not long time ago. The project, by the way, for Ukrainian support is basically the same one as was presented at the very first time last autumn. Here comes the second good news that Ukraine will obtain a huge support, so 59.53 billion dollars. I believe it's less than 61 as promised before because Ukraine has already obtained some of the military support from the current Pentagon programs. So Pentagon had to cut some of the finances for their own programs to urgently support Ukraine and now they will obtain those finances from this military support. The Republican Party was so concentrated on the loan for Ukraine, just not to make it as a gift, but rather than lend money for Ukraine. And here we speak just about $1.58 billion, which will go according to the loan contract. It's about the support of priority sectors of the economy of Ukraine, so it's not the military support, it's a different one. The main military aid is this one. Almost all of the funds will remain in the United States of America. Ukraine will receive weapons and other tools to counteract to the Russian attacks. The only thing that this part of the money would be just landed for Ukraine which I think is actually good. Plus, there is the project in one of the bills that will be voted, hopefully, that the Russian officers will be confiscated to cover all of this military package together with the loan. It is a win-win scenario. I just hope that this military bill will be voted 
because I still think that there could be some of the underwater stones that we are yet unaware of. Because I don't trust MAGA part of the Republican Party and we have many voices from Republicans that some of them would never support the military aid for Ukraine. Hopefully we have the majority of support at least. One more main thing that ATACOMS program is mentioned separately in this document. It says that the United States president should supply those ATACOMS missiles to Ukraine. The only exclusion is the national interest of the United States itself if it needs the missiles somewhere at that particular period of time. But I don't think that there are no any conflicts where the United States would need ATACOMS just right now, so I believe that the chances to supply those missiles to Ukraine are pretty much high. We need a long-range modification with the standard warhead. It might help Ukraine to eliminate the carriage bridge supply. If everything goes well, it might happen during the summer time. So actually, this bill is nice. I do support it. The original document, there are tons of pages you may check out on my Telegram channel. I already posted the copy of it out there. The Telegram channel is in the video description just below. So finally, after all of this time, we have a positive movement from the United States. If MAGA votes for it, I will stop mocking Trump. But you know, I don't think that they will support this bill after all. They will support it for Israel, but not for Ukraine. However, there are pretty much good chances for it to pass through Senate and Congress with the majority of the votes. And you know, the main push to expedite all of this stuff came from Iranian attack, the failed attack on Israel. So you see how the events are now interconnected. So the military bill will be voted this Saturday in Congress and later on will go to Senate. Yeah, obviously it's better to support the current bill, which Mike Johnson might have put at any time for voting in the Congress. But he refused to do so under the MAGA influence. Ukraine has received recently those Soviet BTRs from Bulgaria. The Russian propaganda say that, that those are the scrap metal, rusty vehicles, they're just useless and they were laughing about it, but Ukraine still has capabilities to fix, repair and maintain military units. So let's see the actual photos of those repaired and maintained vehicles. Here we go, Ukraine even modernized those BTRs. Yes, they were stored not in a good conditions, but still they were repaired also from inside, from outside, everything is nitty gritty out there. Meanwhile, the Russian Armata tank was spotted on the front lines, no, I'm just joking, it's the same blood type of the Russian tank. You know, definitely they modernized the construction, they closed the aft part against the drone strikes and the only way how drones might go and target this unit is through the front part. So potentially, yes, it's hard to damage this thing with the FPV drone, but it is quite easy to spot those kind of the tanks on the front lines and target them with anti-tank missiles or artillery. Also, it has quite a powerful drone jammer. Russia recently developed those, and we may spot those on their BMPs or tanks. Our soldiers say that unfortunately this tool, after all, is effective. There were some of the cases that our FPV drones targeted Russian vehicles even with those drone jammers, but Ukrainian FPV drones in that case were equipped with an automatic vision and aiming system. So basically the drone operator flies above the target, clicks on what vehicle he or she wants to target, and drone flies performing the job no matter on distortions. You may lose the signal, but still the drone has the target in its memory. It's called machine vision. Obviously, those drones are way more expensive compared to the standard drones, but they could be effective. So indeed, it looks clumsy, but in reality, how would you hit the Russian tank with the FPV drone under this kind of the protection plus the drone jammer? It's a very hard task after all. Just two of those blood tanks were spotted on the front lines, one was destroyed by artillery, and this one is still probably running. Russia again went with their mid-wave and Ukraine targeted many of the Russian vehicle units, so vehicle units were kaputed on the way it happened in Liman direction. Kind of the funny stuff from the front lines with some sort of the dark humor. So Russians found some dead bodies of Canadian soldiers, wow. And they start to show some of the emblems of Canadian soldiers, saying that you see whom we kaputed out there. 
This is a Ukrainian, yeah, for sure. And, but here they say that it is a Canadian unit that was fighting for Ukraine. They also show this bird from the Canadian military battalion, yeah, for sure. It looks very similar to a legendary Canadian unit. This unit is one of the best in the world, not just in Canada. Well, actually, guys, I'm joking. It is not Canada. This is the flag and symbol of Udmurtska Respublika, which is the part of the Russian Federation. Udmurtska Republic is located behind Tatarstan, so Izhevsk, this part is all Udmurtia. Russians do not know even their own signs and labels. Now the main question is whether they caputed their own unit themselves. Jan Stoltenberg said that they will create commission to find some of the new air defense systems for Ukraine. Netherlands say that they are also searching for the free patriot systems to buy for Ukraine from the other countries. Netherlands officials say that some of the countries have many of the systems but hesitate to supply those to Ukraine even though they do not require the patriot systems in that quantity right now. Quite a pessimistic article from Politica, Ukraine is heading to defeat, saying that the Ukrainian army is demilarized because there is not enough weaponry. In the coming months there will be big losses for Ukrainian army because Russia will start one more attack attempt, maybe on the east, maybe even towards Kharkiv. Men in Ukraine are not willing to join the Ukrainian army any longer. Compared to what it was at the very beginning of the full-scale war, probably I should record separate video about the case why Ukraine failed with its mobilization campaign. Yes, we may admit that it wasn't done properly from Ukrainian side and also from the side of our allies. But Politica puts the positive point at the end saying that with the military support from allies, Ukraine has the chances to change the situation on the front lines. But if the military bill for Ukraine is voted, for example, this month, Ukraine will still start to receive the military support in a couple of months or maybe even later because the system itself is very volatile. You need to produce the required amount of weaponry, then deliver it to Ukraine. You need to train soldiers to use that weaponry. All of that takes time. So the best case scenario for Ukraine was the agreement for the military support the last autumn to be fully ready for the summer campaign of 2024. But now Ukraine just loses this year in constant defense and Russians little by little are taking Ukrainian territory. Russia is much better prepared for the summer campaign compared to Ukraine. It had received the military support from their allies. And they also started the massive production of their own weaponry. Ukraine doesn't have that capability. So we have to rely just on our allies in this case. Unfortunately, that bid didn't work with the United States Congress. That's why Ukraine had to go for defense only and even there it struggles to secure the ground. Yeah, our gas caused Russians severe losses, but Russians with the help of their midwaves and huge resource are able to gain the ground. It is bad thing for Ukraine. However, if you speak about nearby perspectives for the Russian army, they will not be able to achieve the huge goals on the east or in Kharkiv. It's just not possible, even with the current Ukrainian resources. Right, we had the reports before, but now we have the video confirmation that Russia is withdrawing their peacekeepers from so-called Karabakh, the territory of the conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia. As you probably know, the last year Azerbaijan took this territory which is legally belongs to Azerbaijan according to the international recognized borders. So Russians have nothing to do there any longer, they withdraw their forces and probably they're gonna use them in Ukraine unfortunately. Armenia was so disappointed by the case that Russia didn't protect them because they are going to the same military alliance and now officially Armenia posts its membership in the Russian military alliance. Alright, the information from the Ukrainian military intelligence, they say that they caputed one of the Russian military helicopters, Mi-8, in Samara military airfield. They even post this video, so clearly it is Mi-8. You may see some sort of the propeller over here, windows, and this is probably the cockpit of the helicopter, landing gear, so clearly it is a helicopter, looks like this one. 
100% this image is legit, I have no doubts about it. But others say that Ukraine encourages the Russian opposition forces to start more attacks on the Russian Federation territory. Also, Ukrainian units are fighting in Africa. We have the first confirmation officially from Ukrainian intelligence about the case. There were some of the rumors about our troops being deployed in Sudan, fighting against the Wagner mercenaries. Russia is trying to force the Ukrainians to abandon their second biggest city. We are speaking about Kharkiv. In this case, Russia bombed already all the power plants and substations in the city, causing the total blackout. Luckily, there are some of the generators working, but Russia continued to aim towards civilian infrastructure, so locals little by little are leaving their city, unfortunately. Actually, it could be the sign that Russia is planning their ground operation in Kharkiv this year or the next one. All right, Shoigu visited some of the Russian factory. Those are actually some of the drones with this very sophisticated aiming equipment, which I don't believe that Russia is able to produce. For sure, it was delivered from somewhere, maybe from our allied countries, who knows, because still the Western-made equipment is been found in the Russian military vehicles. And this is the new armor vehicle or just a vehicle without any of the armor, Shoigu drove it at the parking spot near a facility. There are some armored vehicles too, probably produced in China. There was no any design, nothing in the Russian press about those vehicles. But now they are fully ready to run, as you can see. One, two, three levers, probably with differential block as well. But again, no any armor for this particular unit. I still wonder of how many units of those vehicles were produced for the Russian army or delivered to the Russian army by China. Russia calls those vehicles Sarmat 2 and Sarmat 3. Right, let's go for the front lines review. For a very long time, we do not receive the positive news. If we speak about the territorial gain, so mostly Russia gains the ground from Ukraine. However, we have just positive news about their convoys or midwaves attacks being demolished. Today they advanced near Novomikhailovo and Ivanivka. So Novomikhailovo is over here near Avdivka town. So Russia expands northbound nowadays from Avdivka town before they expanded westbound taking this ground but were stopped with the help of the Ukrainian counterattack suffering tremendous losses and then they tried to advance from Tenenka village. So now let's zoom to this place, let's go to the timeline. It was yesterday and it is today quite a big advancement by the Russian army. Unfortunately they reached this village. The village is not big, just cavalry of the streets but nevertheless they've took one of those capturing many of the buildings so in the nearby future they're gonna occupy this village and Kremik village as well. Where else did they go? In Ivanovka, this is probably near Bakhmut. No, it's not near Bakhmut. It's actually in Kharkiv Ombost over here. So yesterday and today just a light advancement. You can see it over here but nevertheless it happened. Here we have no any advancement, just a clarification or confirmation from the deep state military map source. Well, near Krasnohorivka, we have just a gray zone expansion, nothing more. Krasnohorivka is probably a new hotspot, quite a big village, so Russia wants to take it under control and later on go to the west to Kurahova village. And now, my friends, don't forget to press your huge like to this channel. By doing so, you help me a lot. And also, as usual, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.